I've worked with top level CEOs, celebrities, to stay at home moms, students, and everything in between. And I always find that we all have stress, we all have insecurities, we all have fears, and we can have some really bizarre behaviors as a result. Triessence is the perfect balance between the three elements of your true essence, physical, mental, and spiritual. Aligning these three states results in happiness, fulfilling relationships, health, success, love, and joy. This is a picture of me when I was three years old. And the reason why I start with this is to say that sometimes it looks like everything is all good on the outside. It's wrapped up in a pink pretty bow, but that's not always the case of what's going on inside of us. Unfortunately, my stress started at a really young age. And by the time I was in my 20s, I had a doctor tell me that I had more ulcers than he could count. And then later I had another doctor tell me that I was in fight or flight mode 24 seven. I'm 43 years old now, my ulcers are gone. And I truly believe because it's a lot of those things that I worked out. My stress level used to be up at a 10, now it's a two or a three because I've taken care of myself in all these different ways. And that has healed that with no medication or anything. That's what I did. And I used to be living my life to my fullest potential down here. Now I'm up here. So I'm super passionate about sharing that with other people. What's all the hype about mindfulness lately? Mindfulness is about three things. Number one, being present. Number two, being aware and in control of our current mood. And number three, knowing the impact that our thoughts and our actions have on our own lives and everyone else's around us. Whether I'm working with someone one-on-one, -on -one, doing a webinar, a keynote speech, a workshop, doing reset breaks, or teaching yoga at an event, I love creating a mindfulness experience and it takes being mindful to be open to hearing these topics that I speak about. Optimists aren't afraid to face their fears. They look at it as an opportunity for growth. So even if it doesn't quite work out the way that they have it planned in their minds, they'll continue to go and try over and over and over until they get it. And it's what causes people to be successful and to be able to fulfill their dreams and live their life to their fullest potential. Optimists have a lot of incredible characteristics about themselves. They're typically more positive people. They don't focus on the negative. They're hopeful. They have grit. They're willing to work hard. They're brave. They tend to be a little bit more creative because they look at things not as failures, but as opportunities. They typically have a big belief in themselves. They believe in other people, and they a lot of times believe in something bigger than themselves. Optimism is a choice that we all have access to. It's about mindful awareness, self-awareness, actually taking the time to go within and pay attention to our thoughts and pay attention to the words that we're speaking. Is it positive or negative? Because at any moment, we can all make a decision to be positive and we can do anything that we set our minds to. Her name is Jeannie, she's a client of mine. And Jeannie's life has drastically changed and is not going the way that she planned, but she still finds purpose and joy every single day in her life. Jeannie has ALS. And she said the amount of joy that it brought me was so much greater than the struggle that it took me to get down there, that it was amazing. And I thought, how many bluebirds, redbirds, hummingbirds, butterflies, each other are we passing all the time of these moments that we can have joy and we're just totally missing it. She sees life in a very different way than we do now. And she looks and she just wants to yell at us and go, what are you stressing about? What are you doing? Sit down, take better care of yourself, spend time with the ones that you love. So she is an example of finding purpose and joy in the little things. Sometimes we think that to live our life to our fullest, we have to be the president or we have to be an Olympian or we have to win these huge awards. We can bring purpose and live our life to our fullest every single day if we make the choice to do it. If we had to sum it up in one word, present, present, present. Are we being present? When we're around other people, do they feel like they're actually really with us? 
When we're driving around in our cars, do we remember the drive or do we show up and wonder how in the world we got there? Are we observant of our beautiful surroundings? We have so much coming at us all the time in technology, which is fabulous, but sometimes it keeps us from being present. What I mean by emotional intelligence is, are we self-aware enough to know the ways that we come across to other people? That's one side of emotional intelligence. But we do need to take care of ourselves emotionally and let ourselves and allow ourselves to release our emotions sometimes, and that's great. Out of the office would be the most preferred setting. And then there's the emotional intelligence side of how do we manage ourselves when we're triggered and when we're under pressure because your brain can't process fear and gratitude at the same time. I think the CEOs down are starting to understand that when you invest in a person, they're going to better invest into the final product, therefore it's going to increase ROI. So having someone come in and at least touch on the topic of personal development and then follow through with tools is invaluable. Do you need to forgive yourself and other people? I had to forgive myself for more things than I had to forgive other people for. But I had done some horrible things to people, some embarrassing things. I don't even have any regrets about it because I just did a debrief with myself. What's working, what's not, what do I want to do different? And I also found that the reason why I did those things was because of my own insecurities and fears. I've worked with people who have had despicable behaviors done to them and done despicable behaviors to others. I've worked with all kinds of people. And the common thread I always find is that it's really something that they're dealing with. It's not that they're these horrible people trying to do horrible things. I'm also not saying that we need to forgive people to condone behaviors. Sometimes we need to set up boundaries. Sometimes they may never know that you even actually forgive them. But imagine a huge triangle is your whole entire life. It's your responsibilities, it's your job, your hobbies, you're taking care of yourself, it represents everything. So how much would you shade in if you shaded in your triessence, but taking care of yourself physically, mentally, spiritually? Is it a dot? Is it a tiny triangle? Is it a medium triangle? No one else has to see it. Just visually picture it for yourself of how well you're doing right now. Not judging yourself, remember this is just checking in. And we are not trying to go for 33.33333% here. That may never happen. But what I want you to see is at different times in your life, your triessence is going to look different. Sometimes it's real easy to take care of yourself physically. You're on a roll, but then you see, I'm not doing anything to feed my soul or I'm not doing anything to grow myself mentally. We just take baby steps. It doesn't have to be the perfect thing. People get so tripped up and think, how am I gonna take care of myself physically, mentally, spiritually? I got a dot and I need, I got a long way to go. Who cares? Take baby steps. Just choose something. That mind focus me. Just pick something every day. Even if it's five minutes of meditating or like I said, eating some vegetables. It doesn't have to be this major thing. And before you know it, because you're doing something every single day, your triessence will be huge. You might even need to put a sign on your door in your office that says, I'm in focus time. Don't keep it on all day long, that's not fair. <laughs> People need to be able to approach you, but just saying, hey, these two hours, I'm gonna be focused. That's a great way to do it too. What is stress? It's an epidemic of anxiety run amok. Our automatic response systems run rampant. Our energy reserves run into the ground. What was once a jolt of energy meant to drive us into action is now unfortunately a slow dripping poison that is paralyzing us. Stress used to keep us alive and that was a great thing. So back in the day when we needed to run from tigers, that was good because our amygdala got fired up, extra cortisol got pumped through our body, and we were keeping ourselves protected. But now, unfortunately, we're getting triggered and we're getting in fight or flight mode just because a coworker doesn't really agree with us. And it can cause all kinds of problems, including weight gain, depression, all the way up to major diseases. 60% of all illness is related to stress and three out of four doctor visits are related to stress. And then we're putting our body in stress because we're sitting all day long. I'm sure you've heard all those terrible statistics, sitting is the new smoking, we're dying at our desk. And then the scary thing is we increase our risk of heart disease, type two diabetes, breast cancer, 
depression by 60 to 125 percent depending on the amount of hours that we sit. Here's my favorite statistic that's out there of all. We lose 20 minutes off of our life for every hour that we sit. I know. So what is the solution? It is to get up throughout the day, taking reset breaks, doing breathing exercises, stretching exercises, just something to get up and moving. But unfortunately, we don't do that on our own, so we have to schedule time and remember to take breaks. Those reset breaks need to be done once every hour if you can. That's what keeps us from having all that bad stuff happen when we're sitting at our desk all the time. Take it back down. Anybody's thighs burning? <laughs> you can have a seat, okay. I believe that optimism plays a big role in certain types of exercises and activities such as yoga or meditation because overall those things are all about caring for ourselves physically, mentally, and spiritually. And when we're able to know that we're important enough to take care of ourselves in these ways, then that's what we experience in those things. So when we're taking deep breaths, it's doing something great for us mentally, it's doing something great for us physically, it's doing something great for us spiritually. When we're in yoga, optimism is a big part of that because we're in community, we know that we're all in this together, we're doing something together, and we're also then doing things for our mind, body, and spirit at the same time. If we believe that we are important enough and love ourselves enough to take care of ourselves physically, mentally, and spiritually, then our health and wellness is going to be great. The way Tessa presents herself on stage is beyond any that I've seen in that she has so much grace and even just her tone of voice makes everybody feel safe and at home. I think it allows for people to open up and engage and really for no one to feel like there's judgment in the room at all. So for us, that was just as important as the topics at hand. I was pretty blown away. It was really amazing to see her integrate a, um, a topic that can be a little bit tricky hey to speak to people about and, like, and really yes, do it very, gonna, very well with a lot of humor and with some very concrete steps. Really being mindful of every little thing, every little aspect, being grateful. I'll be mindful of my breathing, mindful in my consumption, how I sleep, how I rest, and hopefully it'll all amount to positive and kind of an optimi optimistic result in the end. I'm not big on breathing techniques, but I really liked how she explained that. So. How like willing she was to share her story, that was super important. That was something I don't think a lot of people do, so that was really awesome. In order to keep myself grounded and mindful when I'm out on the road, my husband actually built us Matilda the Mindfulness Mobile. And when it makes sense, sometimes we actually get to drive her to events. Sometimes she even lets me drive. <laughs> and sometimes I even get to be a part of the action. We'd love to help you find your own mindfulness vehicle, just something that represents being present so that you can live your life to the fullest. Inhale, sweep it up. I love Tessa's presentation because I do a lot of things for other people. I help with children, I help with my family, but I forgot to balance my life. I just believe that God sent Tessa. I believe that the Lord's been trying to show me this long time ago. I'm always giving and giving and giving, but I forgot about me. Mindfulness isn't going anywhere. It's going to be crucial throughout the rest of our lives because if we're not careful, we're going to miss out on our own beautiful life that's happening right in front of our very own eyes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You have two great people here. I, I mean, I don't even know them, but I feel like I know them. They're so awesome, and I'm so happy that you, that you allowed them to come here today. Thank you. This needs to be worldwide. Everybody needs to see this.